taking you all the way back to 1987. That was Never Gonna Give You Up, the debut single of Rick Astley. And this is one of my favorite, or should I say one of my most favorite songs from the 1980s. And for the longest time, I'm probably going to get some flack for this. I never realized that Rick Astley was actually English. I did not know this for the longest time. I just enjoyed his, uh, you know, his, his music. And I recall that um, not too long ago, I think it was this year, he kind of re recorded the video, you know, and let, let me just say he aged really, really well. And, it, and he still sounded absolutely amazing. So for those who loved Rick Astley and of course loved that particular song, man, it's a jam any day of the week. And what better way to jump into five at five on the smooth drive? Yes, this is me bringing you five of my musings today. What's going on in my head? What's uh, what, what thoughts are swirling in my mind? And of course, this is something you can be a part of. You can, um, you know, comment on the musings and of course, share your musings as well by sending a message on WhatsApp 0809-440-981, 0809-440-981. That's the WhatsApp number to send your messages to. And of course, you can tweet at us at smooth981fm. Let me get right into it. So uh, the first, my first musing of the day like I said earlier, things tend to happen to me each and every single day. And uh, yeah, I love to share my experiences with y'all out there. So uh, on my way to the studio today, I was uh, I was descending. Uh, you know, when, when you're descending towards uh, Moson Center, there tends to be traffic on that axis. So there are like two lanes that try to get down to Moson and then you turn under the bridge towards Amandobilo and Ozumba and whatnot. So... Um, I was looking in my rear view mirror and I saw that um, the car behind me had left a bit of space. So, you know, cars on the left-hand lane usually drive towards Marina and so on and so forth. One SUV just pulled, you know, right behind me. And I looked in the mirror, I was like, ah, the guy behind had already, should I say, lost himself because he left a bit of space. And looking in the mirror, I saw that the person driving wasn't Nigerian. He looked Asian. Let me let me go out on a limb and say he was probably Chinese because I have a lot of Chinese people in Nigeria. And I laughed you know, at the whole situation. So, and I thought to myself, is it human nature that, you know, it doesn't really matter who you are, where you are, as a, maybe your community, your country, where you're staying, tends to, to dictate how you behave. Should we say that um, it is rules and regulations that actually keep people in check in other climes? We know how things are in Nigeria. We do a lot of things anyhow. We behave in all sorts of ways. And we tend to get away with things which tends to be annoying but should we then say that this particular individual he's not nigerian he probably has been here for a very long time and has seen how things are done has seen how people behave and has imbibed that culture so should we say that for those people most likely when they go back to their countries they would not even attempt to do such a thing they would behave and drive properly but because hey they're in a country where I don't know, maybe things are done a certain way or a different way. They just adjust, more or less. So is it safe to say that people behave because there are rules or regulations that they have to adhere to? And if they break those rules and regulations, they're going to get in a bit of trouble. Hey, I was just thinking that probably could be the situation. And this leads me to my second musing of the day. And of course, it still involves my commute all the way to the office. So I had gotten to the point where I was going to turn uh, towards the Muson Center, descending into Muson Center, and I saw these two guys, and uh, for want of a better word, they looked like, should I say, area boys or something, and they were actually stopping cars on the right lane and letting people coming from the outer uh, lane to come in, you know, those who didn't even join the queue right from the back to come in, and I was furious. So when it got to uh, the point where I was trying to get into that exit, there was this, let me call it a big man SUV, pulled up. I wanted to come into my front. I want the guys jump in front of me. Hey, 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 stop, stop. And I shouted back that, no way I'm going to let this guy get into my front. Which leads me to the question, why do we enable, enable such bad behavior? They were doing this thing just because they wanted those they were, you know, letting to get into the lane illegally to collect money from them. And it just goes to show how, you know, we think people have, you know, lined up on a lane, on two lanes. And have been following the lane all bit slowly and you know people who are coming from all the way from the back without queuing on the lane or anything you know driving in and you're actually telling people who have the right of the road to stop 
to allow your clients in quotes to get in just because you want to get 500 naira or something this is you know it's, it's extremely annoying behavior and it actually grinds my gears when i see things like this happening we try to do the right thing but you know there are those who try their best always to circumvent uh you know the right thing and just try to act funny and it just goes to show that when things like this happen people from other countries who come to nigeria will definitely see that these things or people do things in a certain way and of course hey they also want to do that because they know that they're going to get away with it we need to do better as a people and stop enabling this kind of bad behavior you know it's actually, it's actually very annoying and i really hope that you know when we see things like this we actually try to put a stop or try to resist such a thing happening okay on to my third musing and um it's actually a funny one kind of uh so yesterday uh i was with a friend of mine she was watching uh um, a series i think it's um um what's the name again far from home or something which i've actually seen trailers of and i'd actually love to see as well but she was complaining about a particular character ishaya or something we're like no 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 this ishaya he has to go this and that and i was asking her why why are you so invested in this ishaya fellow and she said no, he did this he did that and it just got me thinking that do we do we all watch movies and tv shows and have particular characters that maybe annoy us or give us joy or make us feel a type of way is it about the acting of that particular character or is it the character um itself but hey i guess you really can have you know the character giving you that, that kind of emotion if the acting isn't fantastic I'm, I'm, I'm assuming so i i guess do we have those kind of characters in movies in tv shows that really annoy us or you know we really root for and you're like ah this person has to win at the end oh or this person has to marry the girl at the end or this person has to you know get the contract at the end do we all have that kind of thing i remember i think uh, was it power or something was a character i didn't watch power but i heard the name Tariq was bandied around a lot mercy am i, am I correct did, 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 did you see power at some uh, point? yeah i did but it wasn't for too long because it was too long I, that's it was something else uh, so it wasn't anyways I, but I, I, know what you're saying. I always heard Absolutely. that name Tariq. Tariq, he did this mm. he did that and you know a lot of people just for some reason didn't like him i, I guess maybe the person portraying that character was a really really good actor because if you're not a good actor you definitely cannot get under the skin of people like that so let me know do you have certain tv shows you saw certain movies you watched and you were rooting for a character you know to make it or you were you know rooting for a character to well not make it as the case may be on to my fourth musing of the day and this has to do with the yuletide season and of course the big question why do we always have feel scarcity during the yuletide season mercy and i were talking about this in the studio and it seems like a very very common theme in fact i remember i i, I posted a message in 2017 and it was more or less about i beg keep your rice and chicken this christmas just give me 50 liters of petrol <laughs> yes that was that was it that was as mm. far back as 2017 so it just goes to show that for some reason during the yuletide season there's always fuel scarcity and it just begs the question why do we always have to face that stress everybody is tired even to christmas day boxing day even today fuel queues everywhere which actually led to most of the traffic that was out there you know that we had to face yesterday on saturday on sunday and today nigerians are tired i mean i hope in 2023 during the christmas season we don't have to deal with this anymore on to my fifth and final musing and of course, uh, Mercy had a hand in this one as well. And of course, it got me thinking, why are people always broke in January? Why? My people, why can we not save some money? Aside, I know, Jan um, December, you want to flex, have a good time, go for shows, go to the cinema, go for this play, go to this fancy restaurant. But hey, don't forget that January more often than not has 75 days. So isn't it possible for us to put some money aside and say, okay, you know what? This particular 100,000 Naira, I'm going to lock it somewhere and I will not touch it until January comes around because you see people in January, you know, you think, oh, it's a new year, a new dispensation and all that, you know, people will be happy, but you see stony faces, hard faces all around and people tell you, man, I'm broke, oh, there's no money in my hand. And you're like, but I saw you, I literally saw you flexing in December, you bought XYZ, how are you broke in January? Anyways, it's just a thought that came to our head so maybe we can just try to you know, keep our funds aside and just try to be a bit more prudent in december looking forward to january hey 
75 days in the first month of the new year it's actually a long time to actually be broke and that's all i can take on five at five let me know what you think about the musings and of course if you have musings of your own you can send them to me on whatsapp 0809 triple four zero nine eight one or tweet at me on smooth 981 fm why are you confusing the listeners how is january 75 days they know what i mean <laughs> they know what i mean oh my gosh no doesn't january feel like 75 days sometimes